right, well, it is 5 p.m., so why don't we get going? Uh, good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, my name is William, and I will be kicking off um, our webinar, our first of two for this weekend. Um, I do want to preface first before I even show any content by reminding you all um, back on Tuesday or Wednesday of this past week, you may have seen that the College Board announced that the SAT will be halting its subject tests as well as the optional essay. And so both the um, engagement we're at tonight as well as the one tomorrow will be covering this topic as well. And so tomorrow I will hand over the reins to some great folks from our future planning team. But for tonight, this has been a topic that we had planned well in advance that we're now going to do kind of in tandem with um, the other topic. So once again, thank you all for coming. I do see some familiar names in the participant list. And so if you are a return visitor, it really means a lot to us that you keep on coming. Um, my name is William. And in a second, I will introduce my co-speaker, Nebby. Um, but first, I'm going to do a quick little introduction about uh, who we are and what we do. So Harmony Plus, we are an education organization and we are an official partner of some leading universities and institutions in the United States. With the help of UC Berkeley, we founded some really amazing programs, including BBay, which was a sort of young incubator business program for grade school students. We've also worked with um, SRI International, which is a research institute founded by trustees at Stanford University around the 1950s. And we actually work very closely with San Jose State University. Actually, a lot of our interns and other folks come from that university, which is great. And we are um, very happy to be able to continue providing some top-notch programs to outstanding local and international students. This phrase hybrid learning platform obviously became a huge buzzword around this time a year ago for obvious reasons, but it's something that Harmony Plus has been working on quite a bit. Um, and so we do education and service models as well, right? We offer courses as well as some other service courses such as our future planning. We do online and offline programs, although as you can imagine, that's been pretty heavily online for the past year. Uh, we do sync and async programming and we do both theory as well as putting it into practice. Um, a lot of what we do in the programs we implement have some guidance from top teachers. We do get those endorsements from those schools previously listed. And we just help the people who go through um, our products and our programs build competitive advantages and enjoy that continuous improvement. It all ties into this motto we have of upgrading education. And so these are some of the places that students who have gone through um, our programs have gotten accepted to. Some pretty amazing names across this list, as you can see, including some people we partner with. Um, and I do want to get into tonight's topic. We are talking about um, interning and volunteer opportunities. How do we navigate them? What are some strong tips? Things like that, advice we can give. And I do want to introduce uh, one of our speakers for tonight, our other speaker, and that's my good pal, Nebi. And so he is our strategic partnerships person. And he also is an organizer for many political campaigns, many like local, state, national offices. He's got a lot of amazing connections through that. And he's also in the past done consultant work for the Stanford Institute for Innovation in Developing Economies. And he has a great education background as well. And so Nevi, how are you doing tonight? Good, good, good. Nice, great to see you. How's the weather over there? Weather in California is today is a good day. It was a good afternoon, but mm. I know the rain is coming. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm over in, for those who don't know, I know I'm a, I'm a repeat face at these events, but um, for those that don't know, I'm actually in the Northeast area and it was very, very cold today. Um, but yeah, Nebi, I think we're very lucky to have him on our team. And actually, um, I hope people recognize that woman in the photo with him here on that page. That is our, now our, as of a few days ago, our vice president, Ms. Kamala Harris. So that's very interesting. Um, and a little bit about me. If you come to these webinars every week, you're probably sick of seeing me at this point, but you know, here I am again. And so my name is William and I'm a program coordinator, but I do a lot of other work um, across our many departments at Harmony Plus. Uh, in the year 2015, I actually studied abroad um, through a whole Fulbright Hayes grant uh, in China, which was pretty great. And previously, I also did study abroad curriculum and itinerary design, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> and then um, why don't we get into the agenda for tonight? So we are going to first start with kind of the most pertinent thing, which is how COVID-19 has shifted internships and volunteer opportunities 
how you can plan as a result of that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about volunteering as well and then internship programs. Later on, I'm gonna turn it over to Nebby to talk a little bit about how to make the most of those experiences, soft skills, hard skills, things like that. And also how Harmony Plus can help with those endeavors. So let's just dive right into it. Um, so obviously a lot of opportunities for students shrivel up in light of COVID-19. In addition to virtual school, right, we also are seeing a decrease in opportunities that they have for extracurriculars. And so a May 2020 survey that we collected reported that 22% of organizations have either canceled their internships or put them on halt. And so this number has only increased likely since May 2020, which of course at this point feels like a million years ago and was only a few months into the pandemic. Um, another trend that we've seen as a result is that many internships have shifted their focus to project based instead of start date slash end date based. So now it's not as much a, you know, it begins August 1st and ends October 15th, but more, you know, we give you this assignment and you will work on it on your own time and when it's done, it's done. So the project base is another trend we see as well. Um, so then um, the other thing that you have to remember and the trend that we've seen as we reach out making partnerships is that many industries within themselves have shrunk, right? Certain services, for example, um, previous companies that do similar international education work also coordinated micro study abroads, similar to um, the, the areas that Harmony Plus is in. And that obviously is a branch that is very much diminished during the time of COVID. And so many times those other obligations that might otherwise be intern level, you know, filing, organization, database work are now being given to current staff because there's just not as much labor that can be done to the, due to the decrease in the services. So we are seeing some trends of intern level responsibilities being bumped up to full-time staff. Um, and so that's another unfortunate reality that people have to think of. And so how has COVID-19 affected the answer? The short answer is that it's had a negative impact. I mean, there's no way to get around that. But we are going to take a look at some strategies navigated as well as some pros. Um, and so one thing that we're noticing lately is the rise of the online internship. And you know, many companies are beginning to do this and many organizations that Harmony Plus works with are doing it as well in the project-based capacity. The nice thing with it is that much work has been digitized already. Many more and more organizations are going online with their work. And so this helps to create a safe work-based learning experience for students and also gives them one crucial thing that they might not have otherwise gotten in a realistic normal internship setting is experience in OPM or online project management and communications. And so that's sort of one glass half full way to look at it, right? Is that, you know, as we go into an increasingly digital world, the force nature of the internship being digital is going to throw them directly into it, right? It also gives them that opportunity to develop skills, either those technical, maybe interpersonal or intrapersonal, by successfully completing one or more professional assignments on behalf of a professional organization. And one thing that you might notice or that students may have noticed is that, you know, even in a digital environment, it is very crucial to get interpersonal skills. I was just thinking today, as I've been working at Harmony Plus for however many months, that I've never met any of the people I work with here in person, but it feels like I have. It feels like I know them all very well. And so I do think that you are still able to build that sense of uh, camaraderie and communication in an internship that you might otherwise not get in an in-person experience. And of course, one final pro is um, you do, don't have to worry about those travel or housing costs. And thus that may be a solution for those who can't afford to relocate to other extensive cities for extended periods of time. I know it's very common for internships to be unpaid, especially in fields like humanities, arts, those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, that may be something that while previously was a hindrance for people, they can't work a job where they're not making money. And even though that's still is the case here, at least now they don't have to also front their own costs in terms of the transportation or possible relocation, which is great. Um, and so I think that's another great pro that people can draw from. In the year 2017, the photo on the slide went kind of viral. And if you look at it, you can see why, right? It's a job posting for an intern in London for an organization entitled Fight Against Slavery. They're a charity based in London and they're looking for an unpaid intern. 
Now, I, I hope that the audience can kind of recognize the irony of this photo, right? Because don't some people consider to be an unpaid internship to be almost like a form of slavery, right? And so it is a very ironic thing. And of course, you know, this situation may still persist in the times of Corona or other hindrances, but it is a situation where you don't need to front your own costs as much. You are still being paid in experience, but now the value of that experience goes up due to it being a digital environment. Um, and so that's another advantage that you have as well. By the way, I'm not sure if fighting against slavery is still in practice, but I do, this, this, this photo was a big um, sort of severe backlash for them. Um, and so I talk a little bit about um, some volunteer experience, a little bit of 101 for you. And so when it comes to volunteering, keep in mind that I want to separate the definition of this volunteering from interning, right? A volunteer opportunity we typically think of as being maybe a one-time thing, maybe a recurring thing, but usually not something you are hired for in the way you're hired for an internship, right? It's usually open enrollment um, and more something with kind of a charitable slant to it. Right, as opposed to an internship, which may be like preparation for some kind of job. Um, and so, one, some advice I want to give when it comes to the volunteer experience is that the best volunteer experiences are ones that you want to tie into your overall narrative, right? Your overall interests. And you want to prioritize that over name value places. There are so many applicants that have Boys Club of Boys and Girls of America or um, a similar nonprofit on their listing, but it's just, you know, they're competing against many other people that have a similar thing. And sure, admissions officers have heard of this, but you know, if it doesn't relate much to your overall application in computer science or literature, then it's not going to have that much help, right? You want to instead try to volunteer at places that are related to what you do. And I'll show more of this on a slide coming up. And more to this point, in some instances, we actually are seeing some high cost volunteer opportunities, things like volunteering abroad, you know, going to um, another country to build homes or provide some kind of aid, right? We have seen in situations where these have actually not just not really helped an application, but maybe even hurt the application. And there's a few reasons why, right? One is that volunteer hours or service abroad, it's great, but remember that oftentimes because it's volunteering and unpaid, it's a mark of privilege, right? It is a mark that, you know, you have resources and opportunities that other students might not have, right? If you're, the rest of your application is not very strong as well, they will think, oh, it's another, you know, wealthy student who has all these opportunities and things in them, and they've gone to this other area, not because they have, you know, they have genuine interest in helping people, or they definitely have a humanitarian stance, but actually just because, you know, they were able to and they thought it would look good. And so we have seen, you can go on from college admissions and other co college confidential type of websites and see people discussing this topic. Um, and so the other aspect of why this sometimes tends to have a backlash is because organizations that organize this work oftentimes donate a lot of, or slot a lot of their money towards overhead spending or resources that don't wind up helping the countries as much. Um, and so you can look at these as well. And so one thing that I would recommend students who want to do some kind of a broad initiative or take some kind of initiative abroad do, the two things are A, make sure that you can make it tie into your overall narrative in some positive way, in a way that is more substantive than just, oh, I love helping people, right? And also uh, vet the organization a little bit, right? Look up their background, look up what they do, and you can use evaluation sites or aggregate sites such as Charity Navigator, which will assign a rating to the organizations you work with um, based on you know, outside evaluators, feedback from participants, those areas, and that will help them uh, generate a score. And so if, they, if college admissions see that you go to, you volunteered through an organization that is not well vetted through one of these sites or not well evaluated, they're going to think, oh, well, this person didn't do their homework. They're just looking for, you know, the, the, the brownie points. So that's another thing to think about. Um, and so when it comes to hunting for the opportunities during COVID, and this goes for both volunteering and internships, some advice that we've given in the past, um, we wanna make sure that you look for sure bet opportunities, avoid things that are vulnerable to COVID. 
right? For example, trying to intern at a performance venue, maybe not the best idea now, since these are areas that are constantly closing or reopening and then closing and then reopening with restrictions, uh, things like that, right? They're in a constant state of flux. They don't really have stability. So you wanna look for what are called sure bet opportunities, services, things that are definitely not going to go down in light of COVID, right? We have done this um, in our own capacity with some of the volunteer opportunities that we've been able to uh, create through our EATIC, Extracurricular Activity uh, Inter Trainee and Internship Club, where we, this past fall, we were able to set up many students with um, some political campaigns that were going on across the Santa Clara County and elsewhere in California. These opportunities, you know, campaigns, these won't halt in light of COVID. And so things like that are always good, even in light of a pandemic. Um, and you, another thing you can do is don't just look for the sure bets, but even try to find organizations and departments that are actually ramping up a little bit due to the pandemic, right? And so, for example, medical plants, crucial item logistic chains, things like that. If you have students with a business slant of future and supply chain management, things like that for essential items such as masks, they, we have actually seen upticks of, inter, of these organizations looking for interns as well. Um, and then also online learning, right? Things like what Harmony Plus does. I mean, this is a huge shift. I know many people have joked in the past about, oh, if I you know, knew what was happening this time a year ago, I would have bought stock in Zoom. And so this is a similar idea, right? You have to look at where the flow of things are going. Now here in this bullet, I mentioned that we do, they sometimes do require direct action, right? Because a lot of times what we've seen with these medical plants and, 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 and supply chain internships is a lot of times they don't even post them to job markets, right? Many times these plants or these firms work direct, have already have an existing relationship with a school district or with a college. And so they will maybe work directly with this college to source potential college students or high school students who might be good fits for these areas. And if that's the case, then the listing will never even get posted online. Right, you may never even see that thing get posted because this they are already being sourced students through the schools that they work with, and so sometimes you may have to take direct action, calling a medical plant, calling a, excuse me, calling a supply chain and saying, hey, you know, I have experience and background here, here, and here. Or I know that you guys have to ramp up production during the times of the pandemic. Is there anything that I could do to help? Right. The other thing I would say is stay alert and don't lose hope. I know that when you're going on and looking for, if you've ever found an internship board or a thing like that, it can be very disheartening to go on and see that there's not a lot there, right? But the thing is that a lot of times internships and opportunities are popping up and then getting filled very quickly. So what I always recommend to um, applicants is to have your resume and other materials ready to submit ASAP, right? Don't just prepare it once you see something you like. Have it so that once you see that uh, posting, you're ready to submit what you have and you're ready to apply it. Maybe modify it a little bit so that the wording of it matches what's in the listing, um, but otherwise it's ready to go. And so that's some advice that I give as well. And so when it comes to effectiveness of volunteering on the applications, right, volunteering is always good, but there are going to be some situations where it's more effective than others. Right, so some situations where it's not very effective, we see, you know, sometimes volunteers experiences are a one time thing, you and your friends all went to a soup kitchen one weekend, and you work together, and that was fine, but it even might look a little by itself, a little isolated, it might stick out on a resume, because where otherwise you're listing accomplishments that lasted years and years, you have just this one lone object that seems a little off. Right. And so you want something that has a little bit more high frequency. Monthly is great. Weekly is better. And even if you can swing a daily, that's great. But obviously, you know, we're, we're all busy people. And so you're not always going to see that. And also remember what I was saying before about relevance to major. Right. You don't want to do something that's unrelated to what you study. Try to think of something that's a little bit related. Right. If you are somebody with an interest in computational linguistics or something like that, Volunteering at a soup kitchen doesn't really tie into your narrative. It makes you seem like a humanitarian person, but that's about where it begins and ends, right? When we go to somewhat effective, right? You want something that's beyond entry level. Maybe you have some kind of facilitator or managerial position at what you work at, right? And so now we have a little bit more frequency, something that's a little bit related, right? 
a pre-med major acting as a shift supervisor at a blood drive. That's something that we typically see via volunteer position, right? Uh, looks like my text got a little cut off here, but an English major coordinating uh, is another situation. I think I the text, the full text said something like an English major coordinating at a library. Um, I see that one of the audience members just raised their hand. If it's okay, you could always type your question in the Q and A box, and then we'll try to answer it either during this section or we will have time for Q and A at the end. Um, and so then the most effective things will be like leadership positions with a major organization, self-starting a nonprofit or other initiative, and those that work daily, right? And so a poli-sci major interning for a campaign is always gonna help. A comp sci major starting an organization repairing computers, which actually when I was on my Fulbright Haze, I met a student who actually did this when she was in high school. She started her own organization repairing computer parts. So this isn't just an example I pulled out of my head. This is a real thing. Um, and so these are gonna be the things that are the most effective, right? Things that show drive, things that show um, more than just entry level participation, but also like an upper level organization aspect to it as well. And so that's it. Um, so those are things that are all going to be useful in the long run. And then with volunteering, right, you might feel a little hopeless in this aspect because here's the thing, when there's a pandemic going around, who wants to go to a soup kitchen? Who wants to pick up trash, right? Who wants to do these things that we typically associate with web volunteering or rather with volunteering? And the nice thing is that there is actually some web resources that you can resort to as well in these situations, right? And so some examples that we've seen in the past include Project Gutenberg. And so this is a organ initiative that works kind of similar to Creative Commons license, where they are posting many books that uh, work that are free to look at and free to view, but where they're looking for volunteers constantly is in proofreaders. They want students and people with a background in English to be able to read documents and be able to edit for grip, spelling and grammar and make sure that they're legible and make sense. Right, and you can log in uh, volunteer hours through them as well. And then School on Wheels is another one where um, it's web, they have gone web as well, where they do um, web tutoring for homeless youth and they actually have a very wide reach across the state of California. And so that's another great program as well, where students just need to have access to a webcam computer and need to be able to tutor in a topic that they feel strong in. Right, and so this is another area that tends to work very strongly as well. So I am still seeing some participants raising hands. I wanna remind you, if you have questions, uh, we have two things you can do. Either you can um, type in the Q&A box, um, or we can save questions for the end. So it looks like, hold on, I'm gonna clear the annotations. So Sarah Jaw has asked, do you have any sample ap application letter slash essay to share? Um, not in this presentation here. However, um, I think that that's an area that we, is easily answered by our future planning department. So I could um, follow up with one of them and show off and show that as well. Um, actually, in our EATIC club, cover letter writing and resume writing is something that we work on. But um, I'll see if I can address. Okay. So let's keep on going. Another thing that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention is the idea of a micro experience. And so <laughs> I almost laugh looking at this title just because of kind of how vague this word experience is. And so um, what we have seen with the micro experience, it's not exactly an internship because it doesn't even last a few days. It actually only lasts a few hours. And so many Fortune 500 companies are already starting to do this. And one big example you see is one website called Forage. Um, I believe it used to be called Inside Sherpa. And what it does is it sets up qualified students with these short-term unpaid virtual work experiences. And when I say short-term, I mean really short-term. It's each one is about five to six hours where students can learn what a typical role, what a role in typical work would be like at one of these companies. And so you have but people in the likes of human rights law, software design, data analytics, consulting, uh, where you can go on this website, Forge, and log your progress and, um, and log those things as well. 
right? And so I would recommend these as well, A, so that you can log that experience, and B, because for those students who maybe are a little more undecided in what they want to do and where they want to go, both with their college track and post their receiving their education, it may also give you a better idea or a better, better handle of what you want, right? And so I do say, though, that these should not be used in place of internship experiences since they're a lot shorter, but they will at least show that you have been exploring your options during quarantine, right? These things will at least show that you have been um, working and during the quarantine, you haven't just been sitting in your house playing video games, right? Um, and so that's one thing. I do also want to take this time to mention, right, as the SAT and College Board have recently announced that they are going to be at least temporarily halting the optional test as well as the subject test or the optional essay, um, it is going to go along with a trend that we are seeing now more than ever of colleges relying more on qualitative measures rather than quantitative, right? There's other things like extracurricular experiences. And so I think that that is one of the ways that this presentation will tie into um, what we've learned with uh, CALA tomorrow on what to expect with those. But yeah. Um, so let's see, can you please share the link for Forage? It's not forage.com. Um, I'll see if I can find the URL for it at the end. I believe you can also Google inside Sherpa and it will kind of the it will say forage at the top because that's the old name of it um let me just check that yeah so it's going to be the forage.com put a the at the beginning um and that's another great resource as well so and then when it comes to discussing your volunteer experience um let's see what i can give you so you want to talk about how did you discover the opportunity why did you choose it right this is something that admissions officers love to ask about and so obviously here you want to try to tie it into your own narrative and things that you have done um, related to your schoolwork, your other extracurriculars, and why you chose to do it, right? How did you discover it? You want to avoid things like, oh, my friend made me do it, or, um, well, everybody knows this organization, right? You want to show that you took care into selecting it. Right? Maybe you went on Charity Navigator or one of these evaluation websites and you liked this organization because you saw that pretty much all they receive in donations goes directly to helping people as opposed to overhead costs. Right? Maybe you saw this group care for a cause that you personally care about. Right? So what did you expect from yourself in the opportunity and what did you see when you arrived? Right? They want to see that you expected personal growth and you expected to make a mark. And when you arrived, right, you do want to paint something of a scene of, of a group or an organization, some kind of population that needs assistance, right? That is the whole key of volunteering, right? What exactly did you do? What did you think of your job, right? You do want to maybe think about gussying up this section a little bit. If you worked for a political campaign and all you did was phone banked, you could say, oh, well, you know, I worked with many local citizens and I helped to change their minds on given topics. I helped to advocate for the candidate, those kind of things. And would you do it again? Why or why not, right? It's not always a sure bet to say, yes, I absolutely would. You could say, well, I think that my services are better used somewhere else. You could even say, I think the organization was all right, but I think that there are other ways that this topic can be addressed, right? There are plenty of ways that you can discuss volunteer experience um, without coming off stiff or dry. Remember, I think that one of the worst things you can do is either having little to no experience or having very generic experience, right? The soup kitchen is great, but one weekend there, I mean, it's going to sound very dry compared to what other students might have to offer. Um, so with that in mind, that's a lot of what I have here in the first half. And so I am going to turn it into more of like a, a discussion-based portion here for my good friend Nebby's section. Um, and so, Nebby, thanks for listening to my very long spiel. But I think last time we did this, you talked a little bit about um, an internship experience that you first had when you were younger, I think, working at a, um, in a coffee plant, right? Is that true? Yeah, Coffee Marketing Association. That's where I learned a lot of things. This was uh, knowing all the coffees that you see in Starbucks 
and Pete's coffee, you go in and you see the variety of coffees. So I learned the names of the coffees because it's a big market. It was like a, a commodities market, like a Chicago, but it's in Africa, it was in Ethiopia, which Ethiopia brought a lot of coffees in the marketplace. Yeah, Ethiopia is a big coffee exporter, that's for sure. All right, well then, I think maybe that makes you very, very qualified to uh, tell us a little bit more about internship programs and what we can do with them. Thank All you, right. William. Yeah, I got you. Let's turn it on over. So, <laughs> this is a good slide. So, okay, I can keep this one off. So, we want to say when it comes to the internships, um, you know, we, there's always that story of like a dream student or a dream intern who, you know, made it really big. And there are a lot of familiar faces. And so, um, why don't we go off with the first one? So, check out who it is Oprah Winfrey. She started <laughs> on a TV station in Chicago, WLS nice. TV. Mm hmm. Let's yeah. see. I wonder if our audience knows ones that aren't on this list, but let's go to the next one. Do they know them? Anderson <laughs> Cooper. Famous guy, no? Anderson Cooper, yes. A very famous uh, news journalist for CNN, right? Actually got his start interning at CIA. Yeah, handsome dude. <laughs> That's an incredible place. Yeah, pretty interesting. And the next one are fans of late night TV. Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan O'Brien, he interned for the office of Barney Frank. This is a pretty interesting thing, right? Also a start in politics. And then our final guy, this is somebody who in, a, in the future planning groups, I see people talk about this person as an inspiration all the time. Our good buddy, Mr. Steve Jobs. And so Steve Jobs originally worked at Hewlett Packard, AKA HP, which makes sense, right? And Nebby, I wanted to ask you if you could say a little bit more, right? The intern experiences for Oprah and Steve Jobs make sense, right? She got a lot of her grounding in television. He got a lot of his grounding in working in technology, right? So it makes sense that she would work at a TV station and he would work at HP, right? But these two, I mean, there's a little bit of correlation between CIA and what Anderson does now. Not really that much between Barney Frank and, and hosting Lee night television now. So what do you think? These are kind of more like pivots, right? These people started in one industry and then they totally changed paths. Do you think having that internship experience still helps them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Anderson Cooper learned about the world. It's, it's being in the CIA, it's a spying agency for the US. He has to read every day different uh, newspapers at this time and know about the world. So, and Conan O'Brien being in the Congress, he learned a lot. He learned a lot. He actually he makes uh, a joke of all those congressmen and senators. Maybe he learned to be funny in U.S. Congress. Man, it's inter interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So actually, you know what? Uh, Bill Gates, the famous Bill Gates, was a congressional page boy. Mm. Do you know what a congressional page boy is in the U.S. Congress? I know what like the the television page boys are. It's like um the character Kenneth from Thirty Rock. It's like you know almost like secretary kind of work. No congressional page boy in U.S. Congress is somebody you give him a letter or a, an envelope or a document. He takes it from one office to the other one. So that was a page boy, and uh, I mean Bill Gates was a page boy in U.S. Congress. Nice. Uh, uh, who was the other one? Steven Spielberg, yeah, famous movie producer, director. He was at the Universal Studio. I mean, it's obvious. He learned how to do movies, to learn about movies. He, he worked as a, a, an intern at the Universal Studios. Another one, I don't know if you know, William Spike Lee. Oh, Spike Lee, yeah, of course, famous film director. Yeah, he was in Columbia Pictures. Amazing. So it's an, uh, each internship is different, but having this experience make a lot of things very smooth for young people because they learn uh, how to problem solving, 
competence, how to do a lot of uh, things dealing with different uh, individuals and human beings, uh, and the professionalism that you learn is very, very important. Nice, very good. Yeah, so, you know, there's always paths where interns can uh, get more experience and do more work. Um, so, very cool. Um, I see a question from Sandra Wong uh, in the Q&A. How about paid tutor experience in an online learning service? Is it impressed in college application? I would say yes, right? We do have plenty of people who do those tutoring experiences, even if it's paid, right? The best thing that I would say or the best advice I would give for um, somebody trying to put that on a resume or put it on an application is find a way to quantify it. Find a way to show a result. Did the student you tutor go on to improve in that subject? Did you see that marked improvement, right? Anybody can say, I sat with this person for 20 minutes with a math textbook, but if you can show them the result, that's much better. So hope that answers a little bit, Sandra, but I am gonna try to uh, save the rest of the questions for the end, unless they're directly related to uh, what we're doing on the slides. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about the internships, Nebi? So each, each internship is different, as you know, uh, and uh, an internship experience uh, uh, help a professional work support organization's goals and objectives. Uh, where are the internships? Uh, the internships can be in different places, private, corporate, public or government entities. Uh, I used to help a lot of uh, young people getting uh, government uh, internship, a city of San Jose, city of San Francisco. I used to have young people applying and getting internship. Uh, that's where they learn about leadership. They see a lot of political leaders of those cities and learn from them and they gain confidence. So those are the places that you have and, and a lot of other things that they learn. I can go back, but it's on the slide that I can speak about it. Okay, very cool. So when it comes to the internship, um, your job, as you mentioned there, is to support an organization's goals and objectives, right? And where are the internships? They can be this job training in private, corporate, public, or government entities, right? Can When it comes to things like charitable organizations, what's the line between a volunteer and an internship? Is it just about one is like hired and one is just you show up, or is there a bigger difference in that? So an internship is like work. You have to be there on time, uh, have a specific objectives. Mm -hmm. A volunteer, you you can you can come and uh, and in a way that you have a spare time and uh, do some stuff most of the time. All right, very cool. All right, and um, I did see one question in our chat that I think is pretty relevant. Maybe you can answer this better than I can, Nebi. But um, we have one person who asked. How can we appeal to employers when you have no experience, right? What if you're a student who has good grades, but net few extracurriculars or no extracurriculars, right? If that's the case, um, how can you make a case for employers? Do you only have your transcript to go off of, or can you make some, is there something else you can use to help you? I mean, you could write a good resume. You have to put a good resume. You have to tell them, even you're helping your parents, at home, that can be a good experience. And you could write about your home work, I mean, I mean, working with your family, working with your friends and your school, school's experience, a lot of things you could put in your, in your resume. You gotta put all, right. all those things in your resume. It shows leadership, it shows uh, that you're a team player. This is very important for an employee or an organization. Excellent. Very good. And so I think I want to I want to kind of isolate one thing you said there, which was um, that even if you have limited extracurriculars or no extracurriculars, when it comes to the resume, you can talk about, you know, if, if you're sort of in that pre or smallly developed a phase, you can um, talk about household experience, like chores you've done, assignment tasks you've done around the house. If you're an older sister, how do you care for your younger siblings? Right. These are all things that when you're at the beginning, right, it's better than nothing. And it does show demonstrated ability to do work. 
which I think is important for someone with good grades, right? Because good grades are great, but if I'm a hiring manager for interns, you know, I don't want to know about your ability to take a test well. I want to know about your ability to perform in maybe some kind of leadership role. So I do see a lot of people raising hands. And so once again, please try to use the Q&A box for your questions and we will get to them either during this section or later on. But I do want to move on because we have more to go. So now, Nebi, can you introduce us a little bit more? People talk all the time about soft skills in internships. What exactly are those? No. Time management, number one, how you manage your time, how you show up uh, on time, how you uh, respect uh, people's time. When you're uh, asked you to be on a Zoom conference, you got to be there on time. When they asked you to do something at a particular time, that is very, very important you attend. That's time management, respect. Uh, co-workers, management time, and cooperation. That, that at least shows you that you're leading, you're, you have a good handle of time management. All right, awesome. And I do want to also point out what was written here at the top, right? Soft skills are attributes that help humans to interact effectively with one another. Right. And so these are contrasted with hard skills, which are things like, you know, knowing a computer language or speaking a specific language, having some demonstrated skill. Right. A soft skill is your ability to conduct. Right. There's kind of this fallacy that anybody who's an expert in a given field can teach it to someone else easily. And that's just not true without the help of soft skills. Right. The ability to interact and communicate, make sure that your meanings are understood. Right. Without the soft skills, the hard skills can even be not useless, but far less effective than they might otherwise be. And so that's another big thing that interning as well as volunteering can help you develop. So let's keep on going. So, so I mean, uh, uh, adding on time management, show on time, punctu punctu punctuality, very, very important to finish mm -hmm. uh, an assignment, a job ass assignment on a certain deadline. It's very important. Those are time management. That should be there. Nice. Yeah, ability to show up on time. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the other soft skills we have here. Professional orientation. This is very, very important. I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a little bit older. Professional orientation is very important for me, as you see. Uh, you have to have a good attire, a good demeanor, and, and a good uh, you know, uh, a good way of you presenting yourself, which is very important for a lot of organization. Also, we're, we're living in this age that uh, I live in Silicon Valley. Most of the time I don't put tie, but if I'm in New York, I'm probably put tie. That's called professional orientation. You look very professional in, in a lot of places and interns are not different than workers in, in those places. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to orientation, Abhi, can I ask, like, how has COVID-19 and the fact that most of the work we do now is virtual, how has that shifted? There's this running joke among that, that when people use Zoom, the top, only the top half of your body needs to be professional looking. Is that true in, in internships as well? You still have to maintain that good dress. Yeah, you got to look presentable. You got to look good on, on the computer screen. Mm -hmm. uh, because people will pay attention and respect you, not think about uh, that you have uh, not uh, have a professional, uh, outstanding uh, faces and clothes. It, it's not. It's not that. It's just you have to have a professional attire. Mm -hmm. All right, pretty cool. So that was number two. Can you tell us a little bit more about three, four, and five? Uh, teamwork is very important. That's why I learned uh, when I was a young uh, uh, intern, uh, teamwork is very important to deal with different uh, levels of management, different levels of uh, customers, uh, and ask them and uh, go back and uh, respond uh to the uh, management and to the, the to the in, to, to the customers so it's, it's very very important that you coordinate those things 
that's that values everybody's contribution everybody's uh, everybody's uh, uh, when you're working with teamwork you know everybody's ability everybody's leadership so you learn from there Hello? sorry about that i was muted okay Excellent. And so what about verbal communication? Yeah, being very articulate like you is very important in those mm -hmm. situations. And you learn that from dealing with the professional uh, places. Uh, articulation is very, very important uh, in a lot of places, as you know. Uh, putting your uh, 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 words in the right places and putting everything uh, concise is very very important so th th that is very important verbal communication and you learn of course you learn in school you have a lot of uh, communication but in a professional setting it's different so you learn that here nice all right, great. And thank you for that about, about verbal communication. I do think that that's very important, not just when you're in the role, but also being able to fluidly articulate later on to college admissions officers, as well as potential employers, this internship experience, right? The idea of like the internship has become very vague over the years where, okay, that could mean anything from, you know, high level, like research or data work to bringing people coffee, right? And so it's very important that you understand the differences and that you can articulate those differences. And then the last one, tell me a little bit more about problem solving competence. I think this is one of the most crucial soft skills that people can gain. Yeah. <clears throat> the ability to break down information to a smaller pieces is very, very important. As you know, uh, th th that is very critical to understand uh, and uh, having uh, uh, solving the problems. Uh, so to, to on internship, I think you learn, you gain how to analyze things and solve them in a very, very easy way. You approach them in an easy way or means in, in not an easy way. In, in a very practical way. Excellent. All right. Awesome. And so tell me a little more about some of those key learning points during the internship. Why do we get, why do we do these? So you have hands-on experience about business. You have hands-on mm -hmm. experience about the world. You have hands-on experience. You're young and you have hands-on experience how the world would function. You learn it. Uh, and you learn that uh, uh, it is very important for your 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 uh, go before you go into college. Most of the time, you learn these things which make you ready to the world. So uh, some people go to the military and learn in the military. But some of us, when become an interns and learn about uh, the world, the corporate world, the business world, and uh, and about uh, cultures, about people. So it's very, very important you have hands-on experience. So, and then number two is to have different teams that come from different cultures. You learn that. So I, when, I was, when I was in Africa, I learned it from different people, you know, Europeans, Americans, Asians, talking to them, and understanding them, uh, understanding their values, understanding their concerns, talking to them, helped me to understand the world and working together with expert and respective fields yeah i learned that uh with a lot of experts in that field when i had my internship especially in coffee and selling buying i learned from the best so you learn always you learn when you're young you learn from uh, education or experience and an internship experience you gain that Right. Very cool. Let me ask you maybe more of a technical question, Nebi. So a lot of times when it comes to uh, interns, they might get work with experts in their respective field. 
but maybe that's not the person they receive the most exposure with. Maybe they have some kind of shift coordinator they work with more. If somebody wanted to get a letter of recommendation from somebody they did their internship experience with, which many people do seek to do, would it be more beneficial for them to seek out the person, the supervisor they interacted with the most or the supervisor who has the best qualifications? Which one do you think is better? Uh, this is, uh... I think the immediate supervisor is very important. So you, you can write a good detailed recommendation on that. Mm -hmm. nice. Sometimes try to get from the CEO of the company. If you, he, has, he hasn't seen you for uh, many times you were interning. It can be just a dull letter. So that's not going to help you. Somebody who could super, super, supervise you immediately in your, uh, the, that will, First, that person would write you a good recommendation later. Yeah, that's my perception as well, right? You want to ask from a person who knows you well. All right, well, why don't you tell me a little bit more about some of the internship benefits? You can build your resume on that internship. You can build your resume very well. You can learn, you can put your attributes, leadership, uh, your, you can, some of the people uh, that you meet an internship will help you in your future. I mean, you can network with that company or you can come back maybe after college, you can come back and work in that great company you enter. So, to, and you can make you very marketable to the college you want to go or to the career path you want to take. Because being being young and doing an internship is a very very cool thing. It's a very cool thing, uh, for, as you, as I said, many of the famous people went through a lot of internship. Like you know, Bill, Bill Gates was a page boy in U.S. Congress. It's, it's, right. I can't believe I can't believe when I read about that. So, getting that kind of uh, uh, recommendation from a, a congressman going for him to go to Harvard may may help to me. I know he didn't finish Harvard, but he went to Harvard, Bill Gates. But he she's probably got a lot of recommendations that from the congress congress congressman that he worked with. All right, awesome. And so um, we have a lot of bullets here, but I know we're running a little bit low on time. Could you tell me a little bit more just about building your resume? Because I know that's something that I've seen some questions about from the audience. Yeah, well, your resume, you can build uh, your resume on your experience as an intern and how the, that uh, you can put on your resume that your leadership ability, your competence of uh, solving problems your interactions, you could put all these things on your resume and that make you very marketable, very attractive for the school that you're going or the job that you're looking, the next job you're looking. All right, very cool. So I think we have a f just a few more benefits of internships and I think then we'll kind of talk a little more on how Harmony Plus can help. So can you tell us a little bit about these ones? Yeah, I already uh, touched those things, gain exposure to the real world problems and issues. Uh, uh, you know, when, when you work in US Congress as a page boy, you could learn a lot about the real world exposure. You know, Anderson Cooper, when he worked at CIA as an intern, he's probably learned a lot uh, about the world. So it's helped him right now he's a cnn anchor he, mm -hmm. he knows a lot about the world that he's not uh, new to a lot of places that he's going to cover uh, and he asked the right questions so it's probably it's, uh, internships are like uh, educations like that you need to go before you go to uh, high university or colleges Nice. All right. 
Very cool. And so I do want to take one final look at um, this last thing you gave, because we do have a great statistic here, right? On average, only 20% of graduating seniors have job offers before graduation. I know for me personally, my job offer came like literally the day before my graduation. I was freaking out about this statistic. And then after completing the internship, that percentage increases all the way to 58%. And so you do look to have an impact on that. And actually, my first job offer was from a place that I had interned at when I was um, an undergraduate. So it is definitely something that you can uh, seek to have as well. Um, anyway, let's, let's say a little bit about some of the ways that Harmony Plus can assist in these things. Um, we have had students who have gone through programs like, we've, like you've seen and matriculated into some really incredible schools. Um, one in particular we know is a student who went on to Northeastern and now has um, an offer from Bain Consulting as a rising senior and she did her extracurriculars and internship opportunities through Harmony Plus and I think that was an assist or an aid on her side. And we do have a club called EATIC, which you can learn more about on our website. It's just a um, monthly club that gives students access to some different internship and research opportunities. This group also does um, bi-weekly meetings, so two meetings per month usually that are trainings for things on how to build a resume, uh, interviewing skills, things like that. Um, and then we also are able to uh, use some of our Silicon Valley connections to set some of these students up with some very cool internships. Uh, we also do some research opportunities with some top experts in protective fields. Uh, if you attended our uh, webinar this time about a month ago on climate change with Herman Gear and Lisa Friedman, uh, the research cohort for that group is kicking off tomorrow actually through EATIC, which is very exciting. Um, and so this is another great group as well. Um, but then we also have some other services such as future planning, uh, where we do some college counseling, high school applications, four year planning, summer programs, things like that. We also do a lot of application assistance, essay writing, essay planning, things like that, structuring. And um, we are able to uh, provide services both through coaches in the US. We have education consultants, some of whom you will meet if you attend tomorrow's webinar. Um, and peer mentors as well, right? And we do serve with love. We have a very transparent system where we use what's called a Kanban um, and our Mingdao so that you can keep track of student progress. It's a very great service. So this one person asked how to join the EATIC club. Um, if you can, um, I'll go back to that slide later where you can scan this, like, the QR code or if you go to harmonyplus.com and go under programs, you can find it there as well. Um, and, or you could message uh, the email directly. So um, I do want to save some time for questions because I think we may have a few based on how many hand raised I, I saw. Um, but I do want to remind everybody of tomorrow's topic. And so the name is canceled. How will the discontinuation of the SAT subject test and SAT optional essay affect college applications? So this one is going to be more explicitly about that. And it will focus on other tests that are starting to, uh, we will see, take the place of those subject tests in terms of value. So things like AP tests, other evaluation methods. And that will be done through um, our one of our senior consultants, Miss Calla, who we work with quite a bit, and Kathy as well, um, who are great. And we'll also have a special guest who is Robin, the superintendent of California Cross Point Academy. So if you are interested in that, um, you can look at our website or find us on either Facebook, Instagram, or WeChat, and you can find the QR code to register for that as well. Um, and so we can help for any of the things that I mentioned, either EATIC, this webinar, you can also use this information, this phone number or that email uh, to learn more. So yeah, um, and so I think looks like we have a little bit of time. So I am gonna open up for Q&A. If anybody has any questions they'd like to answer, ask, um, we can do that. I see we have these three here. Same, any sample application letter slash essay to share. So that's something that EATIC would cover, that sample application. Um, and so that would be a great resource as well. Although if you want to just search the, inter the, the, the web as well, there are plenty of great sites that have um, advice for that. The link for Forage I mentioned, it's theforage.com. Um, our sponsor is more hesitant in COVID. Um, if this means like employers and internship employers, then yes, right? What I said before in the survey from May 2020, 22% had canceled. Um, 
So yeah, sponsorship definitely does become more hesitant. All right, we'll give it just a little bit more time. All right, I think maybe that's about it. I see people filtering out. So um, thank you all for your time. Once again, tomorrow's uh, webinar, I recommend you go to it as well, cancel the discontinuation. And that will be a great place uh, to take a look as well and learn more about how the uh, standardized testing has changed. But otherwise, we will see you later. So, oh, looks like we have two more questions. Is it possible to review the slides today? Uh, we do not offer the slides in terms of just sending the PPT. However, this uh, webinar recording will be able to be viewed on Facebook after this. How long should an internship last at least? Um, do you have an answer for this one, Nebi? Yeah, well, sometimes uh, a month to three months, most of the time, that's the experience that I have. Um, it depends on the organization, though. Uh, I mean, but from one month to three months is most of the time, that's what I see. Okay, very good. Are there any global warming internships? Um, well, there's lots of organizations that combat climate change in one way or another. For example, I know we have been talking to one of our connections at um, Valley Water, one of the big water agencies um, who are doing a college internship related to water supply management. Um, I think that that's something that you should be able to, to find online as well, as well as resources we're able to connect with through EATIC. Actually, our EATIC group is doing um, a research project, which is different than an internship because it's not for so a company. We, mm -hmm. we have we have that uh, webinar coming up. Uh, I don't know when, but it's coming up with the, the water district, right? Yes. So um, we're tentatively slating that for the, the, the end of February, but we'll keep people posted on that. Okay. Um, I see one person asking for the Facebook link. The link itself is um, kind of a jumbly URL, but if you just go onto Facebook and search Harmony Plus, it's the first thing to come up. It has this logo that you see there, the little house thing. And so it's pretty easy to find as well. Um, a few more questions coming in. Great, thanks. All right. How do you approach startup companies about potential volunteer or internship opportunities? Mm, this is a good question. Internship opportunities. Um, so I would say give them really dem demonstrated interest, right? If you know someone who works there, because those tend to be very, very insular companies, um, try to have that connection already. If not, you can always show demonstrative interest. These startups usually will have some kind of general contact email where you can send an inquiry to, even if they don't have a job posting about internship opportunities. Another thing that will really impress people, and especially for those smaller companies, is to send a handwritten letter. Um, and so if they have an address listed on their website, you can write your interest and include a copy of your resume and send it to them. And that will help as well. Uh, um, actually, actually, a say about their company will help. If you have, if you're a good writer, you can write an essay about your your what you want to do as an intern in that uh, startup. Yeah, exactly. So, definitely some some different ways, right? I would just say demonstrate interest very strongly. Yep. Um. Yeah. All right, I think we're a little over time. We'll give it just a few more moments for questions. All right, maybe we're that's it for now. So thank you, everybody. I do encourage everybody to come to tomorrow's webinar. Um, oh, and we have one final one, and we'll make this last one. For remote internship, compare with on-site, what can be done better? Um, so, Brian, I, I, I referred to this um, a little earlier in my slide, the things that can be done better are that people get more experience in online program management. 
Um, it's going to be a safer environment, obviously. You don't have to have the same costs associated with like traveling, your own lunches if the internship is unpaid. Um, and, you know, in, in an increasingly digital world, right, I think conducting everything online will actually give many students a leg up in their fields. Um, so, yeah. All right, I think we're going to call it a day on the questions. And then it looks like Aaron also posted the Harmony Plus Facebook page, facebook.com slash Harmony Plus US, or you can just type into the search bar on Facebook. Mm -hmm.